the ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash away my sins, let this little child come in. Yes, he loves me, yes, he loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, yes I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Well, that's a hard act to follow, wouldn't you say? Good morning, church. If it is uh, indeed morning when you are watching this, maybe it's uh, late in the day, but either way, it's uh, good to see you and uh, good to worship with you, uh, even if it is from a distance. Let's uh, go ahead and worship our Father. Blessed be your name, the land that is plentiful, with streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name, blessed be your name, when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise, when the darkness closes in, Lord, Still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, blessed be your name, with the sun shining down on me, with the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name, on the road marked with suffering, no pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise, when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, you give and take away. Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, 
blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Hello, welcome to this uh, uh, virtual and video uh, worship service with the Crosstown Church of Christ. Uh, uh, many of you are watching this every week. There may be some that this is the first time. and We want you to know that even though we can't touch you and see you, we welcome you and we look forward to a time when we can do it in person. I have a scripture reading for the services today. It's from Psalms 42 verses 1 through 5. If you have your Bibles, maybe you want to take some time and turn there. Psalms 42 verses 1 through 5. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. While men say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you so downcast, O oh my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful, grateful day that you've given us. And I hope things will be back the way it was before this virus happened. And also keep looking out for families and others that we care about. And hope all we can come back together. Yes, now pray, amen. As the deer thirst for the waters, Lord, so my soul longs after you. Deeper, Lord, in you. 
my soul. With my soul, it is well. It is well with my soul, my sin. church. Uh, you know, I'm glad we have um, the ability to gather together virtually, uh, but it doesn't replace being together physically. And there's some things that I miss that I know before long we'll be able to uh, get back together, but some of the things I miss are your smiles, uh, the laughter that we share, the Bible classes that we uh, go to together and, and learn, more about, uh, learn more about the Lord, and the singing of praises. But what I miss mostly is um, in participating with is that communion with my brothers and my sisters um, in Christ. I know that day, again, it's going to be soon, uh, hopefully really soon, uh, but as for now, we'll, we'll uh, do what we can to, uh, to commune together. If you will, turn over to 1 John chapter 1, and we're, I'm going to be reading verses 5 of chapter 1 through uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. It says, this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, as we gather together this morning to partake of this communion, Father, we ask that you help us to, to open our minds and our hearts, Father, and to realize that as we take this bread, that uh, this bread repre represents that blood, or that uh, the body that was broken on the cross for you, Father, and the, and the, the pain that he bore on the, on the cross for us. And Father, we ask that you just help us to do so in a way that's pleasing unto you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, as we continue this communion this morning, we uh, we offer this, or we're going to take this uh, fruit of the vine, which represents that blood that was shed for the forgiveness of not only our sins, Father, but for the sins of everyone that has ever walked the face of this earth. And Father, we know that the Jesus is that advocate for us, and without that advocate, that uh, we would not have that way to, to be with you in eternity. In Christ, we pray. Amen. continue in our worship together. Have you a heart that's weary, taking a load of care? Are you a soul that's seeking rest from the burden you bear? Do you know And the 
good to be together once again this morning, church, and especially if you're visiting with us, and we know we've had several, many folks that have been joining us from other congregations uh, outside this area, and maybe that are just looking for a place to draw near to God in these times we find ourselves in, so we're, we're glad that you've joined us this morning, that we can worship the Lord, uh, and so, you know, even though it's through this technology, and uh, it's, it's nice to know, as I said last week, that you're on the other side of that lens and that we're together in, in, in spirit and in heart and that we can connect this way. And we know this, uh, this continues to be a time of, uh, that we're deeply troubled about what's going on and we're praying and we're lifting up our nation, our, our state, our community, uh, those who are uh, at risk and are struggling with this, uh, the economic fallout, all that this entails. We're praying as a church family for you and for uh, all of those uh, in our nation and around the world who have been affected by this, this virus. But, but I think this morning, I think it's time uh, to be a little bit honest in some way. Uh, I'm getting tired of this, just to be honest. You know, the first, first week or so, uh, it was new, and, uh, and there was a lot of jokes and memes and things that were shared maybe online and Facebook, and, and we, we had a lot of laughs, at least initially, I noticed. But as these last few weeks have, have went, went on and on, it's not so funny anymore, and it's never funny. You understand what I'm saying. But something else has is, is been creeping in, I've noticed, in, at least in my life, in my heart, in my emotions. Uh, those negative emotions, uh, fear, uh, worry, anxiety, anger, frustration, confusion, confusion, and quite frankly, sadness and grief. And my go-to passage when, when I have those feelings, uh, whether it's, you know, if you've lost a loved one or you're going through a, a personal grief and, and loss of any type of sadness, is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I just want to reference that verse here this morning. We're not going to be looking at this verse, but we're going to kind of launch from it in our lesson this morning. But in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and beginning in verse 13 through 18, listen to what Paul writes to the church at Thessalonica here in this passage. He says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not notice grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus all those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are, left, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. You know, he says there, and I have that line that he says, we grieve 
but not like those who have no hope. But don't overlook that first statement. We grieve. We grieve. We do grieve when we lose something or someone of great value and worth to us. That's just human nature. That's natural. Something we deeply care about. And I think sometimes as Christians, and even in the church, especially in the Western part of the world and in Christianity, we need to give ourselves permission sometimes to grieve, to express that. You know, several years ago, I attended a funeral uh, and it was a tragic uh, accident death. It, no one was expecting it with this, this man. And he was still in his younger years of his life. And the first words that the preacher said when he got up was basically, there doesn't need to be any tears today in this service. And, and he went on to explain, and I knew what he was trying to do uh, and say. He was trying to inspire hope in his audience but we just can't bypass grief. We just can't bypass grief. Because when you bypass grief, listen to me, you cheapen hope. You cheapen hope. Rushing through grief, trying to get through it as fast as you can, empties hope of its power. Empties hope of its power and its assurance. Think about it. The full joy of the resurrection of Jesus Christ only comes after we embrace the sorrow, the suffering, and the pain. And I don't know if you've noticed this in the Gospels, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They spend a large more amount of time on the death and the suffering of Jesus than the resurrection. I don't know if you've ever noticed that or not. Because when you embrace true grief, Hope shines bright. Hope shines bright. You know, recently there was an article in the Harvard Business Review. Now, don't, uh, don't get to thinking, uh, Robert, you read the Harvard Business Review? No, but it was shared online by, uh, by someone I, I know. And so I went ahead and clicked on it and read the article. And the, it was helpful. It helped, you could tell with the comments and just kind of the response it was getting on the, the person who had shared it. Um, it generated a lot, of, a lot of interest and gave people something to, to think about. But the title of the article was this, That Discomfort You're Feeling is Grief. That Discomfort You're Feeling is Grief. You know, since this COVID-19 crisis uh, has made hermits out of most of us, we're having to kind of stay in, for the most part, in isolation. We're, have you found, find yourself struggling with feelings and emotions that maybe you're not quite sure uh, about? That this article says, that's grief. That's grief. Think about what we've lost since this has, has began, has begun uh, this, uh, with this crisis. I'll just give you some here. No, normalcy. Uh, are you, have you found your schedule a mystery? Each day, each week, you know, what, what, can I, what am I doing today? You know, the routine has been kind of uprooted. Uh, we've lost that sense of normalcy. It's almost impossible to plan for the future. Have you noticed that as well? It's almost like we're living, you know, that old movie with Bill Murray, Groundhog Day. It's like we're living that movie. Every day is just the same day, it seems like. We've lost that sense of, 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 of normalcy. Uh, we, miss, we miss that. We've lost, missed that sense of connection, connecting with people we know and love, friends, family, brothers and sisters in Christ. We've all echoed that as Brandon did earlier uh, in our service. We miss you. We miss seeing your face and, 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 and enjoying that sweet fellowship with each other. It is sad when I think about this building being empty on Sunday and Wednesdays when it's, it's, it's filled on those times with with brothers and sisters in Christ and studying God's word and being together. Uh, we miss that. We've lost that sense of, of connection. And online, this is wonderful that we can come and be together through the technology, but it's, it, it can't replace it. And we know that. We've, we've been made to realize that, I think, even more so. There's been economic loss. Uh, we, it's, it's just unimaginable to get our minds around the economic loss that this has affected the world, but our nation. 
We see the number of unemployment and, and all of this with the economy just being shut down. And even though we hope it, it can get going soon, it's the devastation uh, for many that have lost jobs or, or, or savings or, or, uh, or investments and retirement, all sorts of things. There's been economic loss. There's been this loss of a sense of safety, and maybe if we never had it fully to begin with, there's that perception that somehow we've lost a little bit of that sense of safety. You know, one person was, we was talking to someone and they said, you know, uh, when I go out in public, I almost get the sense or feeling I'm not supposed to be breathing uh, in, in one sense. Wearing masks and separation and uh, six feet of separation and all these things uh, there's people that, uh, that are being overwhelmed with a sense of maybe a loss of, uh, of safety in some way, in, in some form. And so there's, there's grief. Grief is the feeling of loss internally. That's what it is. That's what, that's what grief is. It's that feeling of loss internally. The pain, the heartbreak, the confusion, the anger, the fear. Maybe it's just being immobilized, that you just can't go and do like you once could do. All of that. Um, our whole nation is grieving what we've lost these last several weeks. Is grieving what we've lost. And as believers, we grieve. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. But Paul says we do not grieve like the rest of people who have no hope who do not know Jesus Christ and the blessed gospel of Jesus Christ. We grieve, but not like those who have no hope. In fact, God replaces this hopeless grief with hope and hopefulness. There's actually a book in the Bible that tells us how to grieve. I don't know if you knew that, know, know this or not. It's the book of Psalms. Matter of fact, uh, scholars have estimated that about 40% of all the psalms are psalms of lament, is what they're called. Psalms of lament. 40%. Laments are written in the book of Psalms to help the people of faith uh, express their grief or their frustration or their feelings or their anger and their confusion or, or whatever it might be, their doubt. How do you express yourself to God when you find yourself in these moments? Well, the book of Psalms is a wonderful book that expresses that. You know, we all love Psalm 23, verse 1. Matter of fact, I'm teaching an online class right now on Sunday mornings on the Lord is my shepherd. And we love this great chapter. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. We love that. We love that the Lord is our shepherd. It gives us comfort and assurance and God provides and protects and guides and cares for us. And, and I have nothing to fear in that sense. Uh, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, what a marvelous chapter. Nobody loves Psalm 22, though. That comes right before Psalm 23. That, that's nobody's favorite as far as I can tell for the most part. That's a psalm of confusion. That's a psalm of desperation. It's a psalm of lament. And so, listen to what he says here. Uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Those words should uh, be familiar to us if we know the story of Jesus on the cross as he cried those very words out to God the Father on the cross. Why are you so far from saving me? So far from the words of my groanings. Now, there's a pattern that follows in the, in the lament psalms. Let me, let me show you how they, and you can see it right here in this Psalm 22, and there is a ton of other uh, lament psalms that you can look at. But let's look at the pattern here. You will find the psalmist will start with a complaint, a complaint. Uh, he will put their feelings uh, into words, uh, a grievance. Uh, uh, they're upset, they're angry, they're sad, they're afraid, they're alone, whatever the emotion is. And they will cry out to God with that complaint, if you will, to God. Psalm 22, 6, I am a worm, not a human being. I am scorned by everyone, despised by people. And then in, later on in the psalm, Psalm 22, verse 14, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. You see that complaint 
that the psalmist is, is giving to God, expressing what he's, what he's going through. So you find the pattern of complaint. Then you also find a request when you look at these psalms of laments. Lament. You find a request here in Psalm 22. You skip down verse 19. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. There's his request. Um, almost every psalm of lament ends with, a, with this request. And the next aspect you find or pattern of a, of a lament psalm is trust. A complaint, a request, and then trust. Here in Psalm 22, once again, verse 24. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel, for he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. Now, I was actually looking at this this week, and scholars are actually divided on what is actually happening here. Uh, has his prayer really been answered? Or likely, and this is what I think, looking at it more and more, as he's expressing his complaint, as he's lamenting to God, as he's pouring out to God, as he's making that request, now he finds peace. Now he finds peace. Trusting that God will answer. Trusting God will do what is best for him. We all want to live out Psalm 23. But sometimes in life, we have to live in Psalm 22. We have to live in those moments. and those times, we need to grieve what we've lost. Many are familiar with uh, what's called the five stages of grief. Um, you know, denial and anger and bargaining and depression and acceptance. And it's not some systematic progression that you go through, like step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, done. That's not how it works. Counselors and psychiatrists and those that deal with, with grief uh, and counseling, that's not how grief... Grief is more like a journey. There's valleys and peaks and up and down and, 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 and going sideways and backwards and forward and all, all different directions as you journey. You don't know what's around the next corner when you deal with grief and these kind of emotions. You might go to bed feeling confident, optimistic, and wake up in the morning and you don't know why, but you are just overwhelmed again with a sense of loss or grief or sadness. Just kind of consider these five stages of grief as they've played out during this current crisis that we're in. You've got denial. Ah, this virus won't affect me. Uh, we're going to be just fine. Everything's going to be just fine. Anger. Uh, I can't leave my house? What? They shut down all the restaurants? You gotta be kidding me. You know, just bargaining. Okay, I'll wear the mask. I'll, 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 I'll separate with six feet of, of, of separation. Uh, I'll do what's required of me. Then everything will get back to normal, right? Everything will go back the way it was as soon as I do that. There's depression, sadness. Um, is this the new normal? Is this what things are going to be like for a while? Feelings can, can come in. Uh, I, I don't feel like I'm getting anything accomplished. I, uh, I'm frustrated. I just sometimes don't even want to get moving in the morning. You know, that's, that depression. Then finally, acceptance. This is real. We're going to have a new normal. And that's, that's going to be different from what we had previously experienced. And now I'm going to proceed. I'm going to learn how to proceed in this new normal. That's acceptance. And you see that. And I'm going to take responsibility for what I can take responsibility for. Uh, I'm going to keep my distance. I'm going to do the things that are they're asking of us. Uh, I'm going to, whether it's wear a mask, wash my hands, I'm going to be responsible for what I can be responsible for. And I'm going to accept the things that I, I, I don't have responsibility for. Namely, what other people do. I can't control that. I can't be responsible for what other people do or don't do. I can only be responsible for what I do. I'm going to accept that reality. And at this time, I, I think probably with acceptance, what's most important is compassion. What I mean by that is compassion for others who are not where you are at right now. Because we're all at different stages of this. Uh, compassion for people who are not in the same place where you are right now, dealing with this grief. 
We all want to be at the place of acceptance. That's where we always want to be when we go through a crisis or a tragedy or something that is sad or, or we're grieving. We all want to be balanced with this confidence that we're doing everything that we possibly can and then we're trusting God. That's where we want to get to, that acceptance. But the truth is, personally, for me, I weave, I weave in and out of acceptance. I'll just be honest. I have over these last five weeks. Some days I feel sad. Some days I feel like I'm getting ahead. I'm getting things done. I'm, I'm, I'm managing this. Other days I'm frustrated. I'm sad. I'm confused. I'm, I'm a little upset. Anger. You know, whatever you want to call it. Scared. Worry. The what ifs. I worry about our church. I worry about you and how you're doing in your faith right now. And what kind of effect this is going to have on all of us long term. I, I weave in and out of acceptance. I'll be honest. Maybe you're not, and that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> have compassion on me and others maybe that are uh, not always uh, there. Can you put your words to your grief this morning? Can you identify what you've lost? This is where we're going at here. Grieving does not mean a lack of faith. On the contrary, the greatest men and women in the scriptures were people who cried out to God. Lord, where are you? What's going on? I don't understand this. I'm sad. I'm angry. I'm upset. I'm confused. It, when we take that to God, that's actually an act of faith. <laughs> don't bury that. Don't bury those emotions and pretend that they're not there or that we're all just fine. You know, as we do at church a lot of times, you know, we, I'm fine. You're how are you doing? I'm great. And we're all great. We're not all great. And we need to at times quit pretending like we are uh, because that's not realistic. That's not the reality that we live in. Can you put words into what have you lost? How are you feeling about that? that it's, you know, this past week, I, I did ask for some help once again, as we did on Easter a couple of weeks ago. I asked some of our members for, for help. I asked some of our leaders, some of our elders and their wives and some of our deacons and our staff and a few other members of our congregations, our congregation to put into words what they've lost. Just raw, honest, what they've lost. How do they feel about it? What's on their heart? Can you express your feeling? Can you express what you've lost? I think it's an opportunity for us. And, you know, and we hope things will soon. You know, we're a little optimistic that things will start opening up. Or we're hearing that talk in the coming days and weeks. But before we rush right into that new normal, I think it's, it's important to, to pause and don't rush through the grief because you cheapen, you cheapen hope when you do that. It's an opportunity for us as people of faith to... Uh, would join with one another in communal, communal grief and lament. And so we grieve together as a church this morning. And so I've asked these members, and we've put together this uh, video slideshow, and we're going to watch that now, and I'm going to come back and have some final words and, and close us out, because again, we do not grieve as those who have no hope. So we'll watch this now at this time, and then we'll come back after that's over. You say you're near to the broken You say your peace passes understanding You say you hope for the hurting Where are you? Come close I'm on the verge of breaking Come close I'm desperate for your presence Come close The weight of pain is crushing Come close She touched your hem with the dirt we walk. 
gone When will I wake from this nightmare? Where are you? Where are you now? So come close I'm on the verge of breaking Come close I'm desperate for your presence Come close the weight of pain is crushing, come close. You If you're not scared of my questions Where are you now? It's okay. It's okay to grieve what you've lost. If you're not moved by that, that video, I, I don't know what to tell you. The images across our world, across our nation, in our own city, um, in our own congregation, uh, we grieve what's been lost. God takes that hopeless grief and he brings hope through the gospel of Jesus Christ. I've said before in recent weeks, and I'm going to keep saying it, because I think we need to keep hearing it, church. I don't know, and no one really knows, how things are all going to turn out. We've got the greatest minds on the planet trying to figure solutions out. And no one can tell you for sure what the future is going to be like. I don't know how our lives are going to be forever changed by this. I hope that it's minimal in the coming months and, 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 and at time ahead of us. But I know this, and I can't think of any better way to say it than to recall that, that old hymn, that I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. And that's our God. And that's our Lord. We're going to put our faith and trust in Him. We're going to walk out of sorrow and grief and, and feelings of, of hopelessness, and we're going to embrace the gospel of hope and the gospel of peace, which is only found through Jesus Christ our Lord. We don't have all the answers. <laughs> There's a lot of smart people trying to figure out solutions and answers from all sorts of aspects of this crisis. We don't have to know, church, because we know our God.
and we put our hope and trust in him. And so we rest in that. And that's what I want to encourage you to do To It's okay to grieve. It's okay to name it. But we, we put our faith and trust in our God, who's a God of hope. And as we've talked about time and time again in uh, our, 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 our lessons here, we're not able to offer the traditional invitation where you can respond in our assembly because we're not all together. But you know that it is always available and open. If you are struggling, if you are hurting in, in, a, in a particular way, we are here as a church family. Our ministers, the elders, our brothers and sisters in Christ, you reach out to us. We're checking on you. We want to hear when we call you and text you and reach out to you, don't just say, I'm okay, if you're not okay. Tell us how you feel. Tell us what you're struggling with. We want to pray with you. We want to encourage you. And if there's, of course, anyone that needs to put the Lord on in baptism and find that eternal hope in Jesus, we are here. We are available to offer that and, and assist you in that. Again, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you this week as we walk in hope and trust in him. Well, you got me with that one, Rob. Uh, I'm that guy that, that makes that dumb joke to kind of relieve that tension. I'm un uncomfortable with grief. And uh, I like the way you put it, which was uh, when you gloss over that grief, you uh, what was it? You reduce the, uh, the magnitude of the hope that we have in Jesus. And uh, I don't want to do that. Let's uh, sing one more song together, and we'll uh, close out in a prayer. The Lord's my shepherd, I will not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green, He leadeth me. In pastures green.
Let's pray together. God and Father, we um, are so blessed by the words that you bring and the example that we see. Um, there's so much truth there that is timeless. And here in these days, we, we need that. Uh, thank you for the hope we have. And God, we, we do not grieve like men who have no hope. We, we feel the, the hurt and the pain, but we look beyond it. Your glory shines through and leads us to a place of, of uh, joy and peace that, that we want all men and women on this earth to know. And God, we, we want to be your, your heart and your hands in making that happen. Praise things in Jesus' name. Amen. Your elders wanted to give you an update on the status of worship services, Bible class, and other meetings at the building. While none of these things are scheduled currently, the national and local guidelines are in the process of changing here even in our city this week. Please know that your elders, the ministers, and staff are in conversation to make wise plans for how and when we begin to meet together, together again. As soon as we begin to get something concrete, we will let you know.